Yeah, I wanted to start it off and ask where you found this story, how it uh, sort of came to be. Uh, I There's a few different versions of that. Uh, definitely have gone through this experience in my own way, um, and I was very taken by how certain things happened during this, but like when you're, when you know something like this is going to happen, how time moves, that was something that really was something I wanted to chase and film. Uh, also, I had been living away from New York City where I grew up for many, many years and coming back here during the midst of the pandemic and just finding it so incredibly inspiring and just finding all these lives and how people were surviving in something in a way that was very moving to me. And I think also I was like, for, I've been making films for many years, but I usually uh, am drawn to characters that hold things back and don't speak so much about their feelings. And I really wanted to tell a story where people express themselves. So the writing of this was just a very fun experience. So like Katie's first monologue really was the very first thing that I wrote. And, uh, and just having a character speak so forcefully of things that they thought or so you know thought about other people or whatever it was was just exciting was an exciting opportunity for me yeah she does not hold anything back the entire time she will tell you no, exactly no. what she's thinking about yeah or at least tell her sister about it um which brings me to ask about the family dynamic why three sisters i think it really was that the kind of contrast and the, the, the opportunity for story with conflict, it really was like Katie presented herself first um, and and then suddenly there was this middle sister that came through and then it just, the dynamics were really just apparent. This was like a very uncommon experience in terms of the writing for me where it just poured out and it wasn't so much that I uh, question anything. It was like just going on instinct all the way through production, through the finish line. It was always just like a gut feeling, like this should be the way it should be. This sort of formed itself kind of thing. Well, yeah. Wrote it quick, but. Yeah, I mean, I'd say one thing is that I, um, I walk around a lot with a little notepad writing random different ideas that feel like they could be different stories. And then I saw an opportunity to take different stories and have them all kind of conjoined by these three sisters. So each sister kind of representing, really living their own story and their own view and how, and having very, very different perceptions of the world and their life, even though they're sharing the same space. I have to say, I'm one of three sisters. I don't know if anyone else has sisters. It's very good. It's oh. very realistic. You can't call my sisters bitches, but I can. <laughs> very, very accurate. Um, what was it like working with these just powerhouse women to create this? I, I, I think I was halfway through the first draft of the script when I realized I was writing for the three of them, and including Giovanna Depp, who plays Benji. And um, they're all people that I've either worked with or had some relationship with. Uh, so it already became extremely exciting with just the fantasy of that picturing them in these roles. Um, in some ways, like I'm, and I'm like looking at this retrospectively again. It was like, oh, they feel right, but I could see that in some ways they're playing, especially how they begin, like types of characters that they've played before. But there is always this chance to go somewhere else, just kind of presenting themselves the way that we think of them or how they think of each other and then going to something hopefully very, very different. Um, and then when I got to a script that I was ready to share them, I, I wrote them each, let them know about it, asked if I could send them a hard copy of the script, um, and just to kind of explain, I felt like the hard copy of a script would represent the type of film that I was trying to do, like exist outside of a certain type of, of world. Um, and, and in my letter to them was, Hey, if it, this is something that you want to do, it will be the you know us together as a team. We'll start from there. We'll shoot in a real location. We'll shoot on film, and I'll do my best to shoot in order. And I'll have final cuts. So it's not going to be this thing where you're going to give yourself over to something else, some entity that you don't know. And they all responded and figured we all figured out the time that we could do it. And from that point on, everything worked. And there was like. Different. They're all very, very busy, but we were able to finally figure out. Okay, this this is the window we can do this. And 
Absolutely a dream team. Yeah, no, I mean, I, and mm -hmm. the whole process of editing and the shooting, I would say again, like because we shot as much as we could in order, just that very first take of Carrie Coon <laughs> saying that monologue, mm -hmm. it kind of mm -hmm. threw us all like, oh, there, there it is. And I felt like not only did the other actors respond to just how forceful Carrie was in that very first take, but the, the crew as well, I think we all responded and we're like, okay, she came in so prepared and let's all try to match that, that energy. Absolutely, like jolts you into the story. You're in the middle of it the second it starts, which is a really wonderful thing. Um, something I noticed, I don't know if anyone else did, but the, there's a lot of quiet in the film where people are listening for doors or footsteps, Rachel going into her room, someone going into the kitchen. Um, but they're not listening to each other until they do. Um, I just found that interesting, if you want to elaborate on that at all. One of the, like I did write uh, for this specific apartment, but I did, it, it was the same thing as writing for these actors. Like there was a very specific apartment that I grew up going to as a kid, like not a specific, but a specific type where the walls were that thin and, but they were also solid and there's a foundation to the building and there was a history to it. And you got the sense of the lives that could have lived before yours there. There was a, a sense, there was a humility to just being in a place that was just built from life until death and then somebody else takes it over. Um, and so knowing that it was a real location um, and having this very kind of specific feeling, uh, it was then like, how do you find a place? My, my wife Diaz and I was a producer on this film. We went out and just started looking at places all over we possibly could. And growing up here, I was able to reach out to a lot of friends and say like, hey, is your place still? Is your mom there? Is your whatever? And uh, it kind of led me down to this path, to this place. And I think one of the things that I loved so much about it was just that it's thoughtful. Like the way that it, the walls are, the way that people are isolated, it's, it's trying its best to give each other, give the family space, like that weird thin wall like somebody came up with that as an idea of like creating a living room in the 40s or 50s, whenever that was built. And I just thought it was generous and interesting. And yeah, you hear it and you don't hear it. And it gave me so much to play with, um, especially with the sound designer. And so that was also one of the things that I could talk to the actors because we were doing that there and we were trying to record things. So it wasn't, I never brought them in for ADR afterwards. It was really one of these situations where, okay, can we get, what it sounds like through the, you know, somebody talking or how does it sound when somebody's on the phone over here and does it sound and just try to get that space. Yeah, the, the apartment is his own character in the film, which is yeah. really... Yeah, and everything was practical. So that yeah. like downstairs, that courtyard is the courtyard for the building. Nothing was the weed store she goes to is a few blocks away. Everything was, I'm usually like not fixated on that about New York City films where they're going uptown and then selling downtown. Like I don't really care, but in this mm -hmm. case, like I really wanted it to <coughs> be grounded in, in that world. Yeah, that's very, very well done. Um, I wanna ask about the duck song at the very end. <laughs> I, I, it made me cry when I watched it, um, but it's such a, a good note to end on and having Christina singing it, I just think it was beautiful and why having her sing it versus any of the others and Rachel coming in at the end, I just think it's beautiful. Well. Uh, I, I always get this uh, sense from like when I hear children's songs and nursery songs that they're all very, very sad. Um, and that <laughs> I was just listening to different. At a certain point, I knew that I, because she's always talking about Mirabella and she's talking about like, it felt like this was a natural place that she would go to comfort her sisters the way that she comforts her own daughter. And uh, so I just listened to quite a few um, and this one felt Correct, again, it was like, I heard it, I was like, oh yeah, that's it. And I didn't think twice and asked Lizzie to learn those lines and didn't hear her until we were shooting. Um, but felt it while we were shooting, you know, it was definitely, I think it was the last thing we shot with all of them together before we left. I think that was really the last day. Yeah, that was beautiful. Um, I also wanna ask about not showing Vincent and the choice to have him show up at the end and 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I think um, well, I should say that like Vincent's Vincent coming out of the room was like a total surprise to me writing. Um, <laughs> like I think I had this idea of a very like oh, this will be clean, I'll play within the rules, and this will be orderly. And then suddenly he was coming out, and I was like, oh, no, am I going into this? Like, is this, like, mm -hmm. but I really wanted to suddenly hear what he had to say, and I liked this idea of somebody getting a chance to say sorry, and I love you, and also here's some things that you may not know about me. And, uh, and even if it's a fantasy that we get to experience as it a reality, we get to hear it even if we know it's a fantasy. And that in some sense in my mind that the, the sisters are hearing it, that he gets, this, he gets this moment of peace. So, and also felt like the right way to illustrate what he says about death and dying and absence in the fantasy movies. It's like, I think the idea of going into the room, in Vincent's room and watching him act like an actor, act sick, felt, uh, it's, I usually am offended by seeing that. I've seen it done really well and very moving, but the idea of me doing it and asking an actor, could you do it again? And could you do the makeup so he looks more pale or cough again? All that stuff is not something I want to do. And so uh, I didn't. I knew I didn't want to go into like that type of performance. So there, this felt like a way of addressing death in the way that cinema can uh, use it and felt truthful in its own way even though it's kind of calling out how it's not being truthful yeah the the fantasy of it all that you never really get um, and then jay or sanders uh you know that he came straight through i worked closely with the casting director nicola busto and so the other all the other roles uh angel um you know they all came to casting and they were just like really right and uh, especially when Jay came in, that was really the first time I was getting to hear all the, this long, long monologue. Um, and we're shooting film, so it's not something that we're going to be covering a lot of different angles. It was all like very, had to be very specific and talked about exactly how things were going to move. And, and since I was cutting, I had to know where it was heading all the time. Yeah, how was the rest of the experience with film, working that so tangibly with it? I loved it. It's been a long time. I hadn't shot film since 2010, I guess, um, and for a good reason. I've like yeah, video has been, you know, afforded opportunities that I couldn't. But with this film, I really wanted it to be uh, in conversation with certain films that inspired it and that kind of history of film. And it also knew that we'd only be shooting out of a limited amount of days and in a small space. So knowing that it would force a kind of precision and also that it would work, like we wouldn't be lighting and we wouldn't be, in the, I mean, we'd be lighting, but we wouldn't be lighting like a soundstage mm -hmm. and we wouldn't be moving walls and we wouldn't be hanging lights outside the window so much. Um, and that we'd have to like deal with natural light and, that, and there's nothing that to this day that responds better in my view to natural light than film. Yeah, absolutely. What were some of those other inspirations for the film? Um, I, I know that in the beginning when I was started like writing the script, I had seen a whole series of Eric Romero films and I loved this way of how people express themselves and talk and it felt so opposite of anything that I had ever done. And so even though I think I found out on page five that I wasn't writing that and I couldn't write it and that only he could write that. Um, it was a jumping off place. And then I'm trying to think of like, uh, I know there should be like a good answer. I'll say that there's a beautiful film called The Plot Against Harry that I showed Lizzie um, that's now out, uh, that's from 1969, I think. Um, but it's a beautiful film that I would super recommend. We watched some Hal Hartley films because again, I liked how language was used and how like this is how it is, especially with that opening, it feeling so much like a monologue and me trying to shoot it in the way that you could think it's an audition, just her against a white wall. Like I wanted it to talk about the roles that people cast for themselves or see each other in. Um, trying to think of some other, but there's, a, there's a, you know, I'm watching movies all, I mean, yeah. one of the blessings about being in this city is just being able to walk through pages like this and, yeah. and just see movies. 
I toss it back to them. I'll turn it over to you next. Um, what do you want people to take away from this film when they walk away besides being moved? Uh, I definitely have found comfort in this film for myself um, going through this process. And uh, I, I would love for the other people to feel something like that, that there is there's some there's some connection that happens even when you're losing people that you love. It's absolutely like a cathartic exercise. I hope so. I really am. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is gonna be in select theaters September sixth and on Netflix September twentieth. Tell your friends. Thank you all so much for coming. You can grab your trash and head on out. We'll do another one next month. Thank you guys.